Hello, I'm Cherie Sauer. Thank you for joining me in reading the Bible. Today, we're going to be reading uh, John chapters 10 through 12. If you don't have your Bible, go ahead and just listen along. John chapter 10. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were which he had been saying to them. So Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my father. A division occurred again among the Jews because of these words. Many of them were saying, He has a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to him? Others were saying, These are not the sayings of one demon possessed. A demon cannot open the eyes of the blind, can he? Jesus asserts his deity. At that time, the feast of the dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. The Jews then gathered around him and were saying to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, For a good work we do not, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. Jesus answered them, Has it not been written in your law? I said you are gods? If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Therefore they were seeking again to seize him, and he eluded their grasp. And he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was first baptizing, and he was staying there. Many came to him and were saying, While John performed no sign, yet everything John said about this man was true. Many believed him in there. The Death and Resurrection of Lazarus Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent to word, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not the end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? 
If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. This he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may be believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, so that we may die with him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. When she had said this, she went away and called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I often ask that in my own life. Lord, where are you? Why aren't you answering my prayers? When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man also from dying? So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around it, I said, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Just imagine like a mummy walking out. (laughs) Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. Conspiracy to kill Jesus. Therefore the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a council and were saying, What are we doing? For this man is performing, performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, all men will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. Nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man die for the people and that the whole nation not perish. Now he did not say this on his own initiative, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but in order that he might also gather together into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on they planned together to kill him. Therefore Jesus no longer continued to walk publicly among the Jews. But he went away from there to the country near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there he stayed with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up to Jerusalem out of the country before the Passover to purify themselves. 
So they were seeking for Jesus and were saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think, that he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he was to report it so that they might seize him. Mary anoints Jesus. John chapter 12. Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume of pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples who was intending to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor people? Now he said this, not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to pilfer what was put into it. Therefore Jesus said, Let her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews that then learned that he was there, and they came, not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him many of the Jews were going away and were believing in Jesus. Jesus enters Jerusalem. On the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him, and began to shout, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Jesus, finding a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. These things his disciples did not understand at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written off of him, and that they had done these things to him. So the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify about him. For this reason, also the people went and met him, because they heard that he had performed the sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are not doing any good. Look, the world has gone after him. Greeks seek Jesus. Now there were some Greeks among those who were going up to worship at the feast. These then came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and began, ask, began to ask him, saying, Sir, if we wish to see Jesus, Sir, if we wish to see Jesus, Philip came and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip came and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Jesus foretells his death. Now, now my soul has become troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came out of the heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered. Others were saying an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice has not come for my sake, but for your sakes. Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world be, will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to in indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. The crowd then answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ is to remain forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, for a little while longer the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. These sayings Jesus spoke, and he went away and hid himself from them. But though he had performed so many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our Lord, who has believed our report, and to him has the arm of the Lord been revealed. For this reason they could not believe, for Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes, and he hardened their hearts, so that they would not see with their eyes and perceive with their heart, but be converted, and I heal them. These things Isaiah said because he saw his glory, and he spoke of him. Nevertheless, many, even of the rulers, believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him, for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. 
for they love the approval of men rather than the approval of God. And Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me does not believe in me, but in him who sent me. He who sees me sees the one who sent me. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my sayings and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. I'm going to repeat that again. I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me does not receive my sayings, has one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him at the last day. For I did not speak on my own initiative, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment as to what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Thank you so much for reading chapters, John, reading John chapters 10 through 12 with me today. And welcome to Fear Into Faith Global Bible Revival, where we're on a mission to get a million people to read the Bible cover to cover in a year. I'm your host, Summer Day, and with me today in the studio is Cherie Sauer. Ta da! Bright and cheery and yellow. How are you doing? I just want to match your summer sunshine. <laughs> Oh, you're winning. That's probably the best answer I've heard from anyone thus far. I love it. I support that. Yes, I, it's great. Summer and such. <laughs> okay, tell everybody a little bit about you. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Spokane, Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived there my whole life, other than the last three years when we've lived in an RV and started traveling. Oh, you just live in an RV and start yeah. traveling for yeah. three years. Yeah. I wonder if I know someone who did Ooh, that. Weird. <laughs> In case you don't know, my husband and I did that. That's awesome. Um, are you back in Spokane right now? Or Yes, we've been back for a year okay. unintentionally. We were planning to keep traveling, and now we are putting down our roots again. So, wow. and What's your favorite place you went to? You get asked that all the time. Oh, oh, you, get that. you can't ask that question. Right. All of the places. Uh, Silver Falls in Oregon. Um, uh, the San Diego Zoo was really cool. Nice. California. All parts of California. Anywhere there's an ocean, you, you'll find me. Um Utah was beautiful. I would go back to Utah any day. So and you have kids? There. You have two kids, 11 and 9. Or, sorry, no, they're 12 and 10 now. 12 and 10. 10 and 10. Okay, so if we math, they were 7 and 9 when you started. Yeah. yeah. Well, do they still want to travel or are they good to put down They roots? are ready to put down roots. That's why we're staying put. They they joined a homeschool program okay. and came home and was like, Mom, we're running for president and treasurer. And I was like, okay, well... <laughs> I guess that makes our answer for us. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I love it. How long have you been married? Oh, my gosh. Going on. My husband always laughs at me because he knows the numbers and I don't. Going on 18 years, I think. Good It'll job. We'll pretend like you got it right for sure. <laughs> and then what do you do? Uh, I'm a life and business coach. I specialize in work-life balance and burnout. Oh, for that's good. Yeah. That's really good. Specialize in work-life balance and burnout. I've been there. Yeah. Been there. Yeah. Been there. Me too. Four times. Wow. How long have you been doing that? Uh, gosh, how long have I been doing that? That specifically, about four years. What's your favorite thing about doing that? Oh, the women seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, just after the first couple of sessions of that like weight off of their shoulders mm -hmm. and just feeling, yeah, just that, feeling like there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that they don't have to stay in this overwhelm and this oppression. What's like the first thing you teach them? Um, I teach them how to manage their energy. So I find that most business owners and I think just women in general are going through the motions and wearing all the different hats yeah. and juggling all the things yeah. and and really helping them to figure out where they should be spending their time and their energy to both be the most productive, the most profitable and the most energized and fulfilled. So good. So good. I always say that, you know, in high school, like, one semester of home ec does not make you a good mom <laughs> or a good wife. And like, you don't learn any of those skills. No. Where do you ever learn the skills of time management or how to balance those things so you don't burn out? Yeah. I feel you like don't. you and me are the common denominator. There's just, I think if we had to guess, most women out there have suffered from burnout oh, more yeah. than one time and they don't know what they don't know. They don't have a system, yep. right? 
So I love that you bring him a system. Yep. So yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. My background is sports medicine. So I worked with high performing athletes for 14 mm-hmm. years. I have a master's degree in sports psychology. And after getting burnt out for the fourth time, I was like, it's in sports, they have a three to one rest to performance ratio. In farming, they have a three to one rest to performance ratio. So why can't I apply this to my own life? And what if I could teach other people how to apply that to their lives and their business? Okay. Now, what does that mean? Three to one. Yep. So. Um, so in sports, just to give you an example, um, they have a rest season, right, where they're not doing anything. It doesn't mean they're couch potatoes, but mm-hmm. it's less intensity. Okay. They're um, still doing their sport. They're maybe shooting hoops, but they're having fun mm-hmm. and they're enjoying it. And then they move into their preseason, which is where they are working on skill sets, right? Okay. Team building, yeah. that kind of stuff. And then they move into their competition season and that becomes a higher intensity, but it's more about mindset. And yeah. then their peak season or post season, that's like your March Madness, going for the Olympic mm-hmm. gold medal. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the busy season. That's the peak season. It's that it's all about their sport in that season. And and most other things get taken off their plate, mm-hmm. right? And so in business, we doesn't matter what industry you're in, yeah. every single industry has slow seasons and they have busy seasons and they might have a couple in between. And so I created something that's called the Ramp Method. And so it teaches them how to uh, rest, align, master, peak. So there's it's helping them create intentions and seasons within their business and within their their life. Instead of being reactive, they get to be proactive and know Mm. what goes in each of those seasons and what does not go in those seasons. So good. I love it. How does somebody find out how to coach with you? Do you have a website? Do you think with that? Yep. Um, Yeah. So a couple couple different ways. We have an ebook. Uh, success without sacrifice so five simple oh that's tools. so good <laughs> hold on success without sacrifice it's possible yes it Yay! is possible uh, <laughs> that's the name of our business success without sacrifice because Love that's it. but that's what i believe that's what i've learned yeah. in my own life is that i sacrificed my my health my relationships uh, my fulfillment and i realized that we don't have to do that if we are just intentional about what we do and how we do it so can they buy your ebook on like Amazon? They can just um, download it for free. Oh, you're so awesome. They can get it for free. Okay, y'all need to go get Success Without <laughs> Sacrifice. I think your website is shereesour.com. Yeah. Get, go get your copy because I guarantee some of you are having success and sacrifice. And let's just not take that off the table. I yep. love it. Yeah. I'm so, I'm, I want to read it now. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, I need to apply some of that to my life. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. That's great. Yeah. And, and so you just came here and got a chance to to read in the other room, read the Bible. Yeah. What was it like for you? It was good. It was interesting being on, like reading a Bible. I've done it in, in person, in Bible yeah. studies and in my own life, but never, you know, to somebody. So that was, that was really, really fun. Did you feel like anything in any of the passages stuck out for you? Yeah, honestly, the, the um, first ones were Mark. Uh, chapters five through seven and it was all about deliverance and god has really been laying that on my heart lately Mm -hmm. that i'm gonna deliver some people in my family and it's like i don't want to do that i don't want to be a part of that (laughs) and so it's like you know these meeting you and your events and uh and then that just kind of like set it set it in there like just keeps laying it on there like little by little getting me to step out of my comfort zone so yeah it's interesting how some churches won't talk about that i'm not sure why because if you look at just the Gospels, deliverance is talked about like over 200 times. Yeah. <laughs> just in Mark, like the amount of deliverance in those two chapters. And then somehow that's just like the part that's left out. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. Yeah. Wow. So you felt like it was really speaking to you when you were reading it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I love yeah. it. Well, why did you want to come and read? What made you say yes to this project? Um, I just, for a long time... I was not in the word. I had become, I didn't grow up Christian. I dabbled in and out of churches with friends and family and different things like that. And then um, when I was in college, we got invited to go to a Bible study. And so I started to learn more. And when I first started going to church, it was going because that's like what good people do. <laughs> right. Like I felt like I, I yet, should go to church. When you go yeah. to church, there's a lot of people that aren't really good. Yeah. Not kind, and I had and I had this perception that if you were a Christian, you were a good person, and if you were not a Christian, not that you weren't a bad, that you were a bad person necessarily, but 
That's wow. not how it works. And that's you had some very interesting theology. We're going to unpack did. that. But first, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be right back after this. And then we're going to hear Kinky, curly, wavy, straight. No matter what texture of hair you have, your hair is uniquely you and can shine in its natural beauty. And you don't have to use harsh chemicals that hurt your hair to do it. Hair Rules has exactly what you need. Our non-toxic, nourishing blend of ingredients help you work with your unique hair texture and not against it. You've got beautiful and unique hair. It's time to start showing it. Visit ilovemytexture.com and treat your hair the way it deserves. Your choice, your hair, your rules. ilovemytexture.com Science fiction fans, how does a teenage boy from Ohio become king of the Milky Way? Find out in the new action-packed sci-fi book and audiobook series, Richard, by author Michael W. Hickman. With famous author DNA in his blood, Hickman weaves engaging and thrilling sci-fi stories in Richard, Distant Son, Richard, An Unlikely Love Story, and Richard, The Dragon's Curse. Search those book titles now on Audible and Amazon. We're here with Cherie Sauer, and we were talking about me and how you, you're, you're a coach, and tell us the name of your business again. Uh, success, success Without Sacrifice. Success Without Sacrifice. It just feels beautiful. It feels, it feels <laughs> fabulous. And we were talking a little bit about just your sort of journey, and you were saying you you weren't raised in the church and a bunch of other things, and actually, I want to go back to that. Yeah. I want to go back to that. Since you weren't raised in the church... Do you remember when you first heard about God or anything like that? Like, yeah, um, I remember we being, the juicy. I remember being showing. in church uh, with with my aunt and okay. people talking about how you could pray to God. And, and how old were you? Oh gosh, I don't even know. Five, okay. four or five. I was mm -hmm. young, little, mm -hmm. and so I remember I would pray to God. And I remember we had a Bible at home and we'd read the Bible. But my mom grew up Catholic, and so okay. she was very anti church, very anti religion. Not like anti God, but. Um, she, we just didn't go to church. She didn't like it. She didn't, it just was not a part of wow. her life. And, uh, and then I went to church here and there with friends and different family mm -hmm. through high school and okay. whatnot, but like you'd you know, have a slumber party and next day go to church. Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, I had always prayed to God. I believed in God, but I didn't really know Jesus. I didn't know Jesus Christ. I didn't mm -hmm. really know what that meant. And I okay. thought it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> God was okay, but Jesus yeah. was weird. Yeah, that was like Jesus freaks, you know. Um, oh, so did you know Jesus freaks? I uh, not really. No, it was more just hi. I'm Summer Dan with Jesus freak. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah. So I I remember being in college, okay, and I was sitting studying because I was a high achiever. I was always studying. Um, and I was just sitting in the cafeteria one night by myself. It's like super late. And this girl comes up and she's like, do you know Jesus? And I was like, well, well I, I oh, pray no. to God, you know, and like, I believe in God. And, mm -hmm. and she's like, well, can I just pray for you? And so I was like, sure. This is like super awkward, it's super creepy, like, super weird, you know. Yeah. And then that that was that. And then uh, so she couple, prayed for you. How did you feel when she prayed for you? It was awkward. I felt really weird and really awkward. And to this day i'm like well, maybe that's what led me to i don't know you know i don't know at the time it was weird and it was awkward but um yeah so that was that was kind of my journey and then in kind of like toward the end of college i had um, and actually after i graduated college i think i had been invited to just like a home bible study fellowship okay and um it was very different than churches that i had been to because church it was very um, superficial, I felt like, and it was like you dress up and you go and you have to look perfect and be perfect. And this was like really getting into the word. Wow. Um, and really learning the, the meaning of the word. You can check out the rest of this interview right here or by going to BibleRevival.tv. And if this show has blessed you, you can help us bless others by partnering with us for as little as $20 a month and help us to expand the reach of this show. We'd also like to invite you to join our Kingdom Discipleship Program, where you have an opportunity to get on weekly Bible Zoom calls with us and people around the world to deep dive into His Word. And you can check all that out at BibleRevival.tv. I'll see you next time, my friend.